farce. Farce is a fun term, and I, the definition for it, I believe, is ordinary people pushed into extraordinary circumstances. All the characters are truthful and they're believable, but they're, the situation they're put in is absolutely ridiculous. It's absolutely hilarious. It's this comedy and this play that was written beautifully. Um, every, every motion and every line is completely specific. It is absolutely crazy. Uh, unnecessary farce is just full of twists and turns, people running in and out of doors, and it's just, it's really hard to explain unless you're seeing it. The stakes just keep getting raised and uh, the circumstances keep falling apart, and then it's fun to see these characters take that truth and just continue to raise the level of engagement uh, and the level of crazy. No, not the vista. No, no, not the vista. Doesn't mean it ooh up a wop a mini. Mini mini doesn't mean it ooh up a wop a mini. I see pop pop she bop she do pop. I see pop pop she bop she do pop. Harder, better, faster, stronger. Come on, three, 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 five, three, five. Come la, come la, come la vista. Come la, come la, come la vista. Hey na 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 mi ti. Hey na 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 mi ti. Oh no. We put the role or the position that you are in, but if that's not the case... I'm going to do it. That makes me mad. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> that's cool. This cast is fairly small compared to the last one, so it should be less uh, uh, easier to adapt some of these new, uh, or I don't want to say rules, but expectations come going forward is once you're in the space you're signed in, you should be present and on and ready to go, and that means no cell phones backstage. No cell phones because cell phones can cause you to miss cues, right? And this is a show all about timing, and if you miss your timing, that is devastating. You can kind of see uh, bathrooms on either side, so the, the rooms are mirroring each other. Uh, but as he was saying, because we have so many doors to work on entrances with characters, we are going to be using cue lights. Uh, I just wanted to say, I'm really excited about this. I'm ready to work with all you guys because just because it's so fun. <laughs> but yeah, that's it for me. Awesome. Awesome. All right, so kick it off, Dalton, and let's uh, hear the play. All right. Act one. <clears throat> Hello? Uh, yes? Oh, oh Chief! Hello, hello, Chief. I... No, not at all, sir. So, um, is there anything you'd like to go over again uh, about this meeting? Anything we didn't cover last night? Uh, no, no, I think we covered pretty much everything last night. His appearance is more friendly than, than camera-ready political. I think the... Th oh, gosh, it's such a great... It's such a great question. What can I tell you about this play? Um, well, one, the playwright, Paul Slade Smith, he wrote this about 10 years ago, and he wrote it as a, a vehicle for himself and for uh, some of his friends uh, in his, his own theater company uh, as he was trying to launch his career. Paul Slade Smith is a Broadway actor now, um, has a great reputation, uh, but this was, this was to try and also make his mark. Yeah, it's got all, all the basic farce elements, mistaken identity, like I said, people coming in and out of doors in some kind of syn synchronized pattern of movement, um, people undressing and getting partially naked, it kind of happens in farces as well, so yeah, it's got all the, it's got all the makings of fun. Things feel like they might be spinning out of control because no one expected the mayor to be here this early, and what does that mean? What does that mean? You know, and then of course, if he is here, I get to start being a cop even sooner. You know what I mean? Do one thing for me and just set apart Hello Chief. Make that its own thing. Chief. Yeah. As opposed to Hello Chief and going on to the next mm -hmm. thing. Just like really set it apart. You're the first man I've met in the last 10 years who hasn't asked me for my number rounded to the nearest integer. <laughs> Working with John has been really, really fun. So uh, I didn't know what to expect. I've only seen one of his shows here and it was Footloose. So it was very different from farce. It was a, uh, a contemporary musical rather than a contemporary farce. But working with him has been a blast. Coming in every night, I've been making 
new discoveries and he's been really on top of helping us figure out who our character is, how they fit into this world and what they want. He is great. Honestly, um, very smooth process. He knows what he wants when he wants it and he knows when everything should be timed out, when, when he's so good at timing. He knows when this door needs to close and when this one needs to open. And he's done the show before, so he knows what needs to be done, but he's so good at explaining it to us, the way comedic timing needs to go, the way each beat needs to go. He's definitely willing to work with the actors to try anything that we have envisioned. So if you ever have an idea for a bit or a joke that you think might land or might not land, he's definitely willing to give it a shot and see what works. And I think he's very flexible as far as keeping his vision in line, but also trying to incorporate what the actors see in the character, which is very important in a director. I love what you're doing over there with the, everything, but just keep, keep all the reactions. Like right Working on, with John right has been an absolute treat. Uh, one of the things that I love most about uh, the way that John directs a show is that he really takes his all and he gives it to you and he wants to guide you to the next level of your performance. John really helped me out figuring out the way that the character should move and how the character would react to certain things because that was one of the areas that I was struggling with when we first started this process. Well, and the cool thing about this whole set is it's all on the apron, which is that arch that goes around. Everything in front of that is the apron. It actually, like, the floor can, like, lift up or be taken off, and that's where the pit band would be. Like, the band would be playing in there if it, if it was a musical. Like, a good majority of the set is past that, so you're right in front of the audience, which I think will really immerse people. It, the audience is, like, right in our faces. Um, but I never hurt myself a single time that summer. And everyone else in my cast had to go to first stage because they fell in love. So I will say, yeah. I, I, that's great. I'm that's pretty good at falling. That, that, that's great. I but fall but were your ankles tied and bound? And were they were you? not. It's 90% of the What are your thoughts going into this, man? Uh, I hope I get some giggles. <laughs> <laughs> I hope somebody laughs. <laughs> Crew Watch is a fun day where basically anyone who's involved with any of the technical aspects behind the scenes, they get to come in and it's like their first preview. They get to kind of watch everything. It's kind of a, uh, like a soft opening. They kind of get to see the bare bones of the show before it all comes together tech-wise. But, uh, but this is fun. You get to kind of see where we are right now, how the set's being used. and. We're still answering some questions for ourselves. Each run through, it's like, oh, where does that prop end up? And when do we, when do, when do we put our clothes back on? <laughs> <I get my laughs> clothes back. In, right. So, so we still have things that we're even trying to figure out in our process. But we're glad you're here. Really, you're far You're a kid that hit me with the door. Oh my God. Here. <laughs> Um, I thought that went really well. The crowd was very responsive to all of our actions, but um, we have a lot of work to do, and I think everybody in the cast knows it. It's gonna be good. <laughs> no, it's it will gonna be, be so sure. fun. There's polishing that needs to happen, obviously, but like we, we've we got time. To do that. We got time. Ma'am. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> Hello. Oh my gosh, is that the. Oh, oh, oh there's a camera there. <laughs> oh I didn't God. even know. Pretty important week for us as far as. Uh, trying to find, continue to find the show. So we're polishing Act One tonight, and then polishing Act Two on Tuesday. A couple last minute things that we need to get. Um, this week I hopefully want to have the donuts done. And so is the idea, just to clarify, Lindsay, that the whatever that donut mass is, that'll be secure. Yeah. And then and we'll then just have our two or three real donuts that kind of live on top of it. That's currently That they can yeah. consume. Yep. Cool. Thank you. Great. My name is Kendlin. Um, I am a BFA tech major with an emphasis in costumes, and I am the costume designer for Unnecessary Farce, and I also did the hair and makeup. It's a lot of character analysis. Um, and then it goes into renderings and research and figuring out not only what would fit the characters, but what would fit the time period as well. My favorite costume has to be Mayor Meekly's, uh, played by Tony Smith. He is wearing these amazing 
obnoxious golf shorts and a bright yellow shirt and a hat that matches and it's, it's a great costume. It's, it's probably one of my favorites that I've ever done. Um, everyone who is in the cast is extremely talented and they are perfect for their roles and they play them amazingly. I can't think of any other cast of people to bring this show to life and it's, it's a really awesome show. So the police uniform in the show, we actually contacted the Warrensburg Police Department, gave them a call and said, hey, I'm with the University of Central Missouri Theater Department. We're doing a show where we have a police uniform and we would like to give an accurate police uniform for the time period. And so we ended up going to the police station with Chief Lockhart. So that was, that was a really cool experience also to sort of see him explain everything on the police uniform and what you know, how the holster worked and all the patches and what those meant. And it was really a really cool experience, both as like a civilian who would never see that normally and a costume designer. With the issue of taking on and taking off clothes really fast on stage, especially when it's on stage, you have several options. Uh, so basically what I'm doing right now is this is Todd's dress shirt. And uh, he has to do a quick change and he doesn't have time to unbutton every single button on his shirt. So we're quick rigging it. So I'm going to put in these snaps and basically instead of him having to do it, he can just rip it off, tear away pants style, and it'll make it really quick for him. Today's a really somber day here for, for a lot of us named Tony Smith. Um, today, I will be shaving my head for unnecessary farce. His hair doesn't grow back. Which it will. It will it grow will, back. But if it doesn't, oh, you ready? Lord forbid, yes. he gets to give me a bald spot and shave part of my head. Yeah. <laughs> this is a lot of fun. <laughs> you know, Kenlin, this is my favorite thing that we do together. I know, right? Thank you. It does not look terrible. When you go down to the bars, you know. Yeah. I'll tell you what, that's bragging rights, though. <laughs> Thank you. If you can All pick right. somebody up like that. <laughs> that's funny. How do I feel? Mm -hmm. Um... Is this what Danny DeVito feels like all the time? Uh, Hi. Hey. Hey, so, um, I just got my head shaved today. You got your what? I got my head shaved, you know, like how it was supposed to be. Right, right. Yeah, I think what scares me the most is the fact that I have a giant mole on the top of my head that I didn't know about. Yeah, you did. <laughs> you knew about that? <laughs> <laughs> All right, this conversation's over. Bye. <laughs> I hung up on her. Do, do, okay. do, do. I'm back, John. I just wanted to be here to see this. All right, the big reveal. One, okay. two. Oh my god! <laughs> wow. <laughs> so turn. Let me see the other side. Yeah, let me see it all the way around. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh, good. oh my god. Oh no! That is, mm -hmm. that is the commitment. It's so good. What's up? Ready for some bullshit? I sure am always ready. Oh no. Honey. Introducing Mayor Meekly. Can I touch the top of your head? Honey, oh no. Mm -hmm. Are you okay? Um, you know, I definitely feel like a new man. <laughs> God damn it! God, can I feel it? I don't know what scares me more. The haircut or the big ass on my head. Uh, that's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> but I think what, what made this even more unique for me was, was the fact that Myself, uh, one of our alums, my wife, we were all in the regional premiere of Unnecessary Farce 10 years ago at the American Heartland Theater. Hello. Yes? Oh, oh Chief. Hello, Chief. So I just have constantly had in my own preparation just the flashes about some of the things that we did and some of the things that, that made the show successful for our, our journey. I have a, 
a whole new set of artists that don't have that as context, who need to discover things completely on their own and make it their own. And then I've got the memories of how difficult this show was and some of the ways that I can help just from a foreknowledge standpoint, help us navigate some of the difficulties uh, that make this show really hard to do. You know, when you're directing, you, you, you have to have several things in mind and, and that is like, what's, what's the overall arc of this story and, and what are the rhythms of that arc? And so how do you continue to keep an audience interested in what comes next and always trying to stay one step ahead of the audience, which is like super important in a farce. If they have any idea too soon where you're going, their interest can wane. Making sure that each character is well-rounded and distinct and um, three-dimensional and believable and real and, and then getting each one of those actors to then find the truth of, of their character circumstances and then how do they take that truth with them as those circumstances start to unwind and, and get out of control. Hey, welcome everybody. This is, uh, is this our last? Yes. Woo! Yes. Right? So, great. How exciting. Um, here are the things on, on my list. <laughs> I'm up for re-election this year, and my new political platform is all about theater etiquette. There's a few things I'd like to legislate. For example, did you know turning on your phone, looking at your phone, getting on Facebook on your phone, or texting on your phone while watching a play means you're morally bankrupt? <laughs> It's the law, so don't do it. Or everyone who sees that small satanic screen light up in your hand will look at you and judge you severely. They will literally say, look at that morally bankrupt person being all jerky on their phone. Tony, can I just say, I hate how funny you are. That's something to share with the group. Okay. Did you bring enough, enough depression for everyone? For the rest? Did you bring enough depression for the rest of the class? <laughs> I, yeah, it's obviously, but <laughs> yeah, obviously. Do you have fruit snacks? Oh. I also yeah. have fruit snacks. I mean, I, mean, I have too. I have like, I have like a whole ass box. I can't aim. God, this is really good in that picture. So today is our 10 out of 12 rehearsal, meaning um, of the 12 hours that we're called to be here, we'll be rehearsing 10 hours, um, taking breaks in between to accommodate for the two hours worth of breaks. Um, we're just kind of working everything, running everything with tech. We got here at like 10 o'clock this morning um, and we've been rehearsing ever since. We had like an hour break for lunch and we just finished our first run through of the day without costumes and we're about to get ready to run a few things uh, before tonight and tonight we have our second dress rehearsal. It is, it's really difficult. I mean, just because it's like you're here all day and it's hard to keep your energy up and stay focused, I think, because you know, we're used to rehearsals that are about three hours long-ish, and so I think once you start hitting that like five hour, six hour mark, everyone kind of gets a little bit, you know, but um, it's just something you have to adjust to. The door situation, oh lord. Um, so there are eight doors in the show, and a big uh, style thing with farce is um, doors being coordinated with one another. So opening at the same time, closing at the same time. Like it's this very nice, like it makes the show feel very fluid and very polished when you can do that, but it takes so much work to make sure that two people who cannot see each other are closing the door at the exact same time or opening it or what have you. So we use cue lights over doors. You can see one right up here above this door. Um, and we have one above each door where they enter, and they're all labeled one, two, three, four, five, six. And the stage manager has a cue in their book for when the actor is supposed to come on stage. They'll say, light cue 196, go. And I'll hit go, and then this light will come on just barely, just like that, just did. Um, and it flashes on, and as soon as they see it, they open the door and go. Leave the, who needs to leave the door open for Mrs. Meekly to come in? Because the Which room? sting hallway door. Okay. The first time I come in? Uh huh. Was it's it supposed to be closed? closed? When I say, uh, hello, oh, is anybody here? Uh huh. She doesn't have a key. It was cracked. No, no, no. She doesn't have a key. Wait, am I the only I one it. coming in at this point? Where I do a circle with, uh -huh. with you to put you from this door to the other door. Uh -huh. 
Is there any way that we could just run that once or yes. twice? Yes, we need just to look at Are you talking that's about the door part stuffed open. when yeah, it is. I'm no, in it here and Miss Neatly comes in, it. she looks around and then she's like, oh, well, I, I'll be now. Neatly that part? In. No, no. I think it's the next time she comes in and the yeah. mayor comes in after. Yeah. It's right after I go in the bathroom, Miss Todd. I left the door open because that's when I come in. We do the whole It was open. Was it open that time, though? Yeah, it was open. Everyone's talking about it. All right, never mind. I'll watch for it again tonight. my Bond villain swivel. I keep swiveling too hard that I make a full rotation. Oh, I thought you were saying tech kids are some weird people. <laughs> the heathens of society. <laughs> the heathens of society, oh no. I know that's me. Kumala Vista. Kumala Vista. Hey, na 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 Vista. Hey, na 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 Vista. No, not the Vista. No, 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 no not, not the Vista. Doesn't mean it ooh up a wap a mini. Doesn't mean it ooh up a wap a mini. I see pop pop she bop she doop pop. I see pop pop she bop she doop pop. Harder, better, faster, stronger. Come on, me, 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 me